Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com, and welcome to the John Morris Show Coach Snippets Edition. So in this episode, I'm going to be going through a snippet code that I was asked about. So I was sent a message, and I was asked, how would you go about checking a submitted email to make sure the domain is within an accepted range, or it's one of the accepted values that you want to accept? So the idea here was creating a site where they're only going to allow people to sign up who have a EDU or have a college related email address. And so they want to be able to check the domain and make sure that it's within the range that they they want to accept. So I went ahead and created a little class that will do this and then I'm creating this video and we'll walk through how to do this. This episode is sponsored by the complete web developers course taught by Rob Percival on Udemy.com. Now what I love about this course is first how comprehensive it is. It's 235 lectures on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Bootstrap, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, APIs, and mobile apps. I mean, it's ridiculous. Second, I love how good of a teacher Rob is. As a former school teacher, Rob knows how to explain complex concepts in ways anyone can understand. And of course, the cool thing is I talked Rob into giving my audience an 85% discount on the course. So check the description of this video for a special link that contains a coupon code good for 85% off of the complete web developers course by Rob Percival. Click that link and you'll be all set for the discount. Now, on to the episode. All right, so the setup for this is really pretty simple. I simply created a PHP file, gave it a name of class-validate-email.php, and put created a class inside of that that does all the heavy lifting that you can include, however, into your program. So I don't know exactly how someone might use this in their program, so keep that in mind as you're using this. You may need to alter some of this a little bit to fit with your program but I think you should get the idea. Now, if you are looking where you can get this source code and wanna know where you can do that, be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video and I will show you exactly where to get this source code. All right, so let's walk through this. So the first thing that we did is is of course create a class. I pretty much do everything anymore inside of a class, outside of a few very small things and it's really just um, a better way to go about coding. The thing about this is this may be considered overkill for this one specific thing. However, I could imagine you expanding this class to validate email addresses in all sorts of ways. So this is really just one way to validate it. You could definitely add to this class and have other ways that you may want to do that. So we have a validate email class and you'll just include this in your project wherever you need it. All right, inside the class, then we have our first class property. This is a private property because it really really only makes sense for use inside of this class. Even if you maybe were gonna use this outside of this class, uh, it, it really wouldn't make sense to use it as a property. What would make more sense is to use it as maybe inside of a config file or maybe stored in a database. Uh, and in that sense, you could really still call that information and set it up as a property in, inside of here. So I went ahead and made that a private property so that we can use that inside of this class only. Then we have our constructor here. So in our constructor, then we're setting we're setting our property of accepted domains to an array of domains that we're going to accept. Now again, depending on your application, you may not want to actually set this here. So for example, you want to make maybe you might want to create a config file where you actually have an uh, s- actually set this array or create this array, and then inside of the constructor you just set accepted domains the the property here to the value of the array that you created in the config file. Or you may uh, have something here where you pull this from a database because you want to save these values in a database. I'm not again not really sure how you might use this in your application. So this is really kind of the one intersection point that you would want to adjust for what your particular application happens to do. You can see here, I just kept it really simple, created an array, and in that array, 
we have unl.edu and uni.edu as elements in that array. All right, so moving on, uh, we come down here to our validate by domain method. So this is the method. This is really, if you're thinking of this in a, in a MVC type setup, you could think of this as your controller. This is the method that is going to, to actually call all of the private functions that we have in here to actually validate the domain. So to that, then we pass our email address or our email address. Now, this may be, or well, most likely will be post data that's submitted. So this is, a, again, the way you would do this is you'd include this class into your application and then you would, when a form is submitted that you wanna check the email address of, you would take the post data and the, the, the email address from that post data and you would send it to this validate by domain method. Okay, so and I'll show you how to use it here in a little bit, but uh, this is kind of the main method that runs everything. So you can see inside of this, then we are setting the uh, domain variable equal to this get domain and then passing the email address. So this is a private method inside of this class. So let's go ahead and hop down to get domain because I wanna go through this kind of step by step. So if we go down to get domain, which is right down here, you can see it accepts an email address and it does a couple things. First, it checks if an, a valid email address was submitted. And to do that, it passes it to our final uh, private method in here, which is is email. So we passed, passed the email address there. So down here in is email, where we get the email address, then we're doing a very, very simple check using filter var, which is a PHP function. And what it will do is it will check the value of the email address against a filter that we specify. So in this case, we've specified the validate email filter. So this is essentially going to, PHP is going to check this email address and make sure it's a valid email address. And it does all the heavy lifting for us so we don't have to write code to do that. So, and then, if filter var returns true, then we'll return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So if it's a valid email, then we'll get a true, and if not, we'll get a false. So back up here, we'll either get a true or a false. If it's false, right, then we're going to return false up to our validate by domain method, which is then going to cause it to return false. And that's ultimately what we're after. We need to know if this uh, URL or this domain is valid. Well, if it's not even a valid email address, then it does. We, we can't really check it. Okay, so that's the first thing that we do here. If we get a true, then we continue down here, and what we do is we split the email address at the at symbol. So we know every email address is going to have this at symbol, and we know that the domain is going to come after that at symbol. So we split it apart at the at symbol and we put it into this variable named email parts. You could of course name that whatever you wanted, but that's what I named it here. Then we're going to pop off everything after the at symbol. So we use array pop to do that. We pass in our email parts variable that we just created here and we set that to, uh, we set the variable domain to the value of that to what's returned. And then we simply return that because all this function is doing is getting the domain. Okay, so we've got the domain now because we've split everything apart and that sends us back up here to validate by domain. So our value or our domain variable up here is now set to the value to the domain that we, we figured out down here. Now we can run our check. So we check if the domain is accepted and we return true if so. So uh, if in array, the domain, so the domain we just got and our property of accepted domains that we set up here. So if this domain is in our accepted domains, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. 
And so as you can see, that's a pretty simple and straightforward way of doing this. I obviously chunked it out here so that you can reuse some of the uh, parts of how we go about doing this. I could see you wanting to validate email addresses. I could see you wanting to get the domains for other reasons. So I went ahead and chunked those parts out and then we use them inside of our validate domain uh, method up here to check to see if it's an accepted domain. One thing that you'll notice here that I didn't cover is on the email address here, I am wrapping it in this trim again, which is a PHP function, which is going to trim white space from the front and back of the email address. Just in case uh, someone were to happen to enter the email address in your form and accidentally put white space at the beginning or the end. In this particular case, my thought is I don't want that to be something that invalidates the check that we're running here. So we just go ahead and trim that white space off of the front and the back and then we pass the email address to the rest of our uh, functions here, so or our methods here. All right, so that is kind of covering the class and how it works. Now let's go ahead and pop over here to index.php and show you how to actually use this. So the first thing we do is we require our file, so our class-validate-email.php file. And then we instantiate a new instance of that class. So new validate email equals new validate email. And then we can use our validate by domain method. And since it's a public method, then we can use it, uh, we can use it out here, <laughs> essentially. We can use it outside the class like we're doing here. All right, so what we're doing here is a simple check. So we're running an if statement, if validate email, then the validate by domain method and then we pass in our email address. In this case, it's justin at unl.edu, which is something I just made up. And you'll notice I added white space to the end of this to show uh, how our trim works. All right, so unl.edu is one of our accepted domains, so this should return true. So if this returns true, then we should get an echo statement that says this is valid. If not, it should say this is not valid. Then down here, we're running the same check, validate by domain, and we're doing it on json at uni.edu with no white space, you'll notice here. Again, this is one of our accepted domains, so it should return true. And then down here, validate by domain, and we're doing ramon at ui.edu, which is not one of our accepted domains. So this should actually return false. So we should get a true, true, and a false. And so if we come over here to our site here and we take a look at our, uh, our actual output here, you'll see that we have this is valid, this is valid, and this is not valid. So we have true, true, and false. So that's a simple class for validating an email address by domain and should give you a good start about go how about, about being able to go about doing this again with whatever you're doing for your application, you may wanna add other methods to validate email addresses other way. You may wanna do some different checks in here, and so you can kind of build on this class and build it out however you want to. All right, so that will do it for this episode. Now, if you got value from this episode, if you could do me a favor and share it with somebody who you think would benefit from it, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so you get access to all of my latest tutorials. Now, if you want to get access to this source code, then the way to do that is to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources, or if you're on my website, you can simply click the resources tab right up here, and that will take you to my web developer resources page. Now, I have a whole all kinds of web developer resources on here from classes to the different tools that I use. But if you scroll down to the bottom here, then you'll see a section called code snippets and you'll see PHP code snippets, WordPress code snippets, and Genesis code snippets. So you can go ahead and click on through to the code snippets that apply for the video you're watching and you'll be able to get access to th that code snippet. Now, if we click here, for example, on PHP code snippets, then we will be taken to that page and you'll see all of the different code snippets here and you can click through and you'll get the video, you'll get the description and you'll get the code snippet as well. So again, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources, head on down to the code snippet section to get access to the snippet that you're after. Of course, while you're here, you might as well look around and see some of the other developer tools and courses that I have available here 
that are going to help you down your path of becoming a web developer. And since I'm constantly adding to this page, then you might as well bookmark this page and check back often so you can see all of the things that I've added and get access to all of the tools and snippets and courses and things that I'm using throughout my career. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.